dear friends uh, this is a continuation of the long review of the book linear algebra done right by sheldon axler and today our topic is of linear operator so this is uh, section uh, chapter 3 which i am going to show you so here is a picture of carl frederick gauss who started the method of gaussian elimination of solving simultaneous equations linear equations so here we start with the linear uh, maps and here are the fundamental learning objectives of this chapter so it, it, it consists of a lot of things some of the important things are product spaces and quotient spaces which we will discuss a bit so now i'll go to the board uh, and my student whom i am very thankful my current PhD student Aditya Chauhan he is uh, doing the small video for you so i will use my duster which essentially is a cloth which <laughs> looks very funny but it's okay so let me just pick up my chalk so here the first thing is about a linear map so i'll divide this thing into two parts Today I'll do a review of some part and tell me another one in this week which will be review of another part. So for a linear map, if you take any u and v, so t is a map from v to w. So these are elements of v. It so this must be equal to t u plus t v, which is called the preservation or addition or additivity. So then T of lambda V is lambda of T V. Lambda is from F, which is R or C, the field on which the vector space V is based on. Now here, this lambda is multiplying T V. Now T V is in the vector space W. So lambda must also be from the vector space, from the field on basis on, on which the vector space W is based on. So which means both of these has, are chosen from the same field. Right? So this is very important. So this is a key thing that you have to understand that we are choosing uh, V and W from the same, over the same field. So for example, I uh, will give you an example of a uh, linear operator, or rather a uh, linear operator. So if you take a, if you have, if T is a linear operator between two spaces, so we denote it like this, that is exactly the denoting. Set of all linear operators between V and W, that is the way that is denoted. An important example here is to get the set f infinity, it consists of all kinds of sequences. So its elements are sequences. x i is element of r and i is an n. So these are sequences. So a linear operator t here, which is very important in fractal geometry is the shift operator and also in dynamical systems. So what you do, it is shifting one of them, throwing them off. So the answer is, so if I define now this, so now T, so this is a vector space, T is a mapping from f infinity to f infinity and t is a linear map so this is a nice example very little uncommon example okay <laughs> so here they give a lot of lot more example polynomials coming here so let us look into this theorem so suppose you have the vector space v and you have 
Vn. This is a basis, right? So finite dimensional. So and <clears throat> and let W one, W two, W n be n elements of W. Right. So W one, W two. I do not know what is the dimension of W here. So they are just n elements. So there exists a unique linear map. This is a very important result. Unique linear map T from V to W such that. So there must be a one single linear map which you can figure out so that T of V J must be equal to W J or all J equal to one to n. So this is an important result. Another there are several other concepts which are part of the book, so which I request every student who are interested in linear algebra should actually download the fourth edition of the book because that is open access. So now here is an important concept, two important concepts which you already know about because in finite dimension you know that linear maps are nothing but matrices. So you know about what is the null space, kernel of a matrix or null space of a matrix and uh, range of a matrix is a kind of an image of a matrix, an image space. So, here we call, we will have the two spaces, the null space or linear operator T, which we will call null T and uh, which they symbolize as null T. So null T is a collection of V element of V as that Tv equal to 0. So it's a solution of this equation, Tv equal to 0. Now this null T is a vector space by itself. So it is a subspace of the actual space, vector space V. Also there is something called kernel. Hey, sorry, I make a mistake something called the range space. So range space is the image space. So what is it? The image space is range space of T, which is also called the range T. So it's a set of all T of V or V element of V. So this is what it is. So this is also a subspace, it is a vector space itself or subspace of W. So these are vector space, subspace of V, the null space. So a very important result in linear algebra which you will, we will see has a constant tune in our next lecture is called the rank nullity theorem. So what is this rank nullity theorem? See, when I am writing all these, making these definitions or linear maps, we are not at all telling that V and W are finite dimensional vector spaces. This is not uh, required here. So if V is finite dimensional, then any subspace of the vector space must be finite dimensional. This is the important thing. Rank nullity theorem says the following. So you take a linear map L from the space of all linear maps 
mapping from V to W. And V is finite dimensional. W we are not telling anything. Then a beautiful result is then the range itself, then the range itself is finite dimensional. This is theorem 3.22. It's a very fundamental result of it's called it's called a fundamental theorem of linear maps in this book, but it's also known very more popularly as a rank knowledge theorem. Range itself is finite dimensional. So the range, range space itself, so range t itself is finite dimensional, maybe write in range t itself is finite dimensional. And the major important result is that dimension of V is equal to dimension of Null t is vector space plus now because the range t is finite dimensional is dimension of range t. It's amazing. If you see the book of Gilbert Strang, he has a section called four subspaces, and that four subspaces is actually trying to establish this particular result where he talks in terms of matrices, T is a matrix, but in general you see your W need not be finite dimensional, that's a very very crucial assumption, that even if just V is finite dimensional, the image of T must be finite dimensional, so, it, it, so range of T is a finite dimensional subset of W, you don't have to bother about the dimension of W, and that's a very very important learning. So there are several other things which are required, so in our next discussion we will try to show the use of the rank nullity theorem and that will be our discussion based on this book so as i am doing this review i am trying to also give you a outlook of the several important results in linear algebra which you will require as you study mathematics or do any other subjects like physics or statistics or whatever whatever is interesting because linear algebra is so fundamental that to me it will come out everywhere. So thank you very much and thank you Adita for being so kind and taking this video. So thank you once again and have a nice day.